Hi everyone, this is Jonathan Meyer, and today I'm going to talk to you about authentication and authorization in microservice architectures. Before we dive in, here's a quick executive summary of the ideas I present in this video. To handle authentication, you'll want to create a user service to store your users. This supports the principles of single responsibility and single source of truth for our data. That user service can then support an authenticate endpoint, which your API gateway or your individual microservices can query against. To handle authorization, you'll want to store and associate permissions to users in the user service. You can handle your authorization business logic in two ways. On the one hand, you can build out an authorized endpoint on your user service that your microservices can query. On the other hand, you can delegate authorization business logic to each of your individual microservices. There are various trade-offs between these two paths that I get into later on in this talk. Now, for the broader talk, let's define some terms. Authentication, or AuthN, means identifying who's making a request against one of our APIs. Authorization, or AuthZ, means determining what a user can do in our system once they have been identified. In evaluating these architecture decisions around authentication and authorization, I will use three guiding principles. One, the microservice single responsibility principle, meaning that a microservice should be responsible for doing approximately one thing in one domain. Two, the single source of truth principle, that every piece of information in our microservice system should be managed authoritatively by a single service. And finally, I'll be looking at things through the lens of implementation cost. That is, if you're a startup strapped for engineers, which of these solutions may work best for you? First things first, let's talk about handling authentication. The single responsibility principle and the single source of truth dictate that we should have one source of truth for managing our users. This implies creating a user management service. This service can support an authenticate endpoint. An example of a request coming into our system might look as follows. A user makes a request against our API gateway. The gateway queries the user service's authenticate endpoint to validate who the user is. And then finally, the API gateway forwards the authenticated request to our downstream target API. Handling authorization is slightly trickier. The single source of truth principle dictates that our permission data also live in our user service. However, we are left with two paths in terms of applying our authorization business logic. On the one hand, we can centralize the business logic by putting it in the user service's authorized endpoint, or on the other hand, we can make our permissioning business logic local to each API, thereby delegating the responsibility down to our individual microservices. An example request utilizing an authorized endpoint might look as follows. The user makes a request against the API gateway, the gateway queries authenticate, and then forwards the authenticated request to the target API, which then queries the user service is authorize endpoint and allows or denies the request accordingly. There are a few trade-offs to think about when considering building out an authorized endpoint. On the one hand, this is most likely the best solution if you have a microservice ecosystem that needs to support a wide variety of languages and frameworks. Additionally, it aligns well with the single responsibility principle by abstracting out authorization functionality into a single place. On the other hand, there are a few disadvantages as well. In particular, it requires a certain amount of engineering lift to effectively build out a registry of services and endpoints and tie those in with your permissioning system. Them. Additionally, it can make your testing requirements more complex. Now let's talk about a solution where we delegate authorization business logic down to each of our individual microservices. We could use a mechanism as follows. We store permissions in the user service, send permissions as a part of the authenticate response payload, and then construct some code in downstream APIs that consumes that permission blob and determines user access accordingly. An example request might look as follows. A user makes a request against the gateway. The gateway queries the authenticate endpoint and receives a response payload, including the user's permissions. The gateway then forwards the authenticated request along with the permission blob in, say, for instance, an X permission header to the downstream APIs. The downstream APIs can then make a decision whether or not to allow or deny the request. Let's look at the trade-offs of the delegation strategy. On the one hand, frameworks like Django already have a lot of functionality designed to support authentication and authorization in the services locally. This means that if you've built all of your APIs in a framework like Django or even Django itself, implementing this approach can be a relatively low engineering lift. If you've built all of your services using a single language or framework, you can also create shared libraries to use across them to apply this business logic. However, there are disadvantages here as well. In particular, as before, if you need to support a microservice ecosystem with a wide variety of languages and frameworks, this approach is probably a non-starter for you because you'll need to maintain a wide variety of libraries capable of parsing that user permission blob. I hope this video was informative and educational and that you all got something out of it. If you did or you have any further questions, I'd love to hear from you, either in the comments or on Twitter at Jonathan W. Meyer. Thanks so much.
stay well.